Welcome to all of our students. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Um, LinkedIn, of course, uh, this day and age, especially right now, is uh, such an important uh, platform to uh, familiarize yourself. And uh, we are so excited to have Maggie here, who is going to be teaching us how best to utilize it. Um, so uh, again, Maggie, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Maggie is the enterprise sales executive who partners with C-level sales and marketing leaders at B2B organizations, as well as their teams to grow their personal and professional brands. After spending nearly a decade working in consultative sales and software sales for startups to the world's largest professional organizations, LinkedIn, Maggie knows that relationships matter. In her current role, Maggie partners with sales leadership teams at some of LinkedIn's most important customers to transform their sales teams into successful modern sellers. In addition to her work as a sales executive, Maggie volunteers with Streetwise Partners as a business mentor. Maggie graduated from the College of Business here at Sacred Heart in 2012. She received a Bachelor of Science in Marketing with a Psychology minor and was a scholar athlete on the Division I women's soccer team. So Maggie, again, thank you and welcome. And everybody, we are going to be taking question and answers at the end of the presentation. So feel free to use the chat. Um, but again, you're all on mute. Um, and uh, without further ado, Maggie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you again. Perfect. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, appreciate your time today. Um, look forward to kind of walking you through the slides um, as we go through. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we'll we'll address those um, at the end. But want to talk a little bit with you today about how you can really control the narrative um, and create your own personal brand on LinkedIn to position yourself in the best light to start your career, to advance your career wherever you are uh, in that journey today. So um, if you don't have the LinkedIn app on your phone, um, you should download it. It's a really easy, uh, nice you know, app to have to access everything on LinkedIn. If you do have the app on your phone, feel free to scan my QR code and we can get connected on LinkedIn. Um, but again, the mobile app is, is really nice. When you do send an invitation, if you do request me, and just the best practice is uh, just personalize the invitation. You'll see you have the ability to add a note. Um, super important just to provide context, you know, hey, thanks for doing the session, or, you know, let's say you meet somebody at a networking event. Um, hey, it was great to meet you at, you know, the Sacred Heart Career Fair, appreciated your time discussing X or Y, right? Um, just to provide that context and remind that person of who you are, um you know name to the face and maybe something unique about how you met or the conversation so uh we'll jump in here um oh actually before i do um if you're wondering how to scan the qr code on the linkedin app uh when you open it up you're gonna I mean, you guys are all tech savvy college students so i probably don't have to walk you through this but um you'll click right on the the four squares in the search bar and you'll have the ability to scan or show your qr code so that's kind of how that, uh, how that feature works. In terms of our agenda for today, uh, we're gonna walk through a couple core areas. First and foremost, you know, just getting to know LinkedIn, what it is, why it exists, how to get noticed, so how to create a really strong LinkedIn profile, how to launch your career on LinkedIn. So, you know, why use LinkedIn? Why is it important? How do I network and create a community on LinkedIn? and um, learning new skills as well so again around launching your career how do i not just have a linkedin but have one that is going to help me to uh, advance in the goals and objectives that i have for starting my career or accelerating my career so let's talk for a second before we jump into specifics about profiles around what is linkedin well linkedin is the world's largest social professional network um, we have over 706 million members worldwide today, uh, and three people join every second. So I've been with LinkedIn two years. I think when I went through my first training, that number was, you know, in the, the low 600s, now 700, 706 million plus. So that's just to say it's ever growing and ever expanding globally. 
Uh, you can see a majority of our users um, are, you know, with global footprint, um, you know, 150 million in the US alone, but you could see the wide breadth of users that we have across Europe, across Asia, across South America. And 92% of the US workforce are on LinkedIn. I talked about three people joining every second. Uh, most people actually aren't aware though, uh, that LinkedIn was acquired uh, in 2016 by Microsoft for $26.2 billion with a B. Um, and the reason why we were acquired is the wealth of data that we do have. Again, being the world's largest social professional network, you know, Microsoft really saw that as a value add, right, for their company and for their customers. So um, we do sit within the Microsoft family now. Why is LinkedIn important? Really three core things that we'll kind of talk about today and address throughout these slides. Um, what we see is that, you know, students today are really facing a challenging and complex and fragmented work place. Um, there's many different pathways to move forward. Of course, there's always competition, right? Students and recruiters, um, too, are facing the most competitive job market in history. New skills are emerging every day, every year, right? And, and companies are expecting you to acquire them and to understand them, to be on that bleeding edge. Um, and then, of course, disruption is always something that's constant, right? Whether it's technology or economic pressures or global pandemics. Um, disruption is kind of that constant that we can depend on. So, you know, how do we stay ahead um, and how do we, you know, give ourselves a leg up? Well, one of the reasons why I am so passionate about, you know, working for LinkedIn is really our mission. And the mission of LinkedIn is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. Um, it's all about enabling economic growth for each member and connecting them to you know, the best opportunities in the marketplace um, for them to take advantage of. So specifically for students on LinkedIn, what can LinkedIn do for you? It can help you do three things really well. And again, if you're gonna walk out of this call and understand you know, how LinkedIn can help you, this is the slide to remember. Um, it's gonna help you to connect to the professional world. So obviously creating a profile, you know, starting to connect with um, executives, starting to follow executives, perhaps in industries that you care about or follow the companies that you care about to stay informed, right? As we're following these companies on LinkedIn, we're learning about, you know, uh, the fashion market, the sports market, the, you know, financial services market, whatever that area is that you're interested in, there's opportunity for you to learn and stay informed about what the top companies are doing in that industry, perhaps what, is some, what some of the innovative startups are doing in that industry as well. And then um, last but certainly not least is getting hired or building your career. Again, um, you have the ability to control your narrative on LinkedIn. You can write a story, you can create a really strong personal brand to allow yourself to show up in the best light, to give yourself the best opportunity, your best foot forward digitally to employ uh, employers. So it's more than just that online resume, it's really an opportunity for you to own your narrative. So again, we talked a little bit about this earlier in terms of our member base. We have over 706 million members, there's over 40 million students and recent graduates on LinkedIn. There's over 30 million companies on LinkedIn with about 20 million open jobs at any given time. So a ton of opportunity out there. Um, and there's also, you know, probably at this point, because these slides are about um, a month or two old at this point, over 100,000 schools on the platform and over 30,000 education related groups on LinkedIn. So let's transition. Let's talk now about how you're actually going to get noticed on LinkedIn, specifically your LinkedIn profile. So you can launch your career using LinkedIn. Um, and you'll notice I'm, I'm not much of a slide person. So I kind of have talked to some of these topics as we're going through. But really, it's to help you do two things, right? Build your brand and get hired. It's not just about being on LinkedIn. It's about using it strategically. 
We want to use it to reach our professional goals. We want to, um, you know, ensure that we can define what is my personal brand going to be as I pursue my career. So when we talk about building your professional brand and getting noticed by your future boss and by recruiters, it's very important to show off your talents on LinkedIn. And we know that all Fortune 100 companies use LinkedIn. They actually pay for a product called LinkedIn Recruiter. And this is why when we're creating our personal brand, we're gonna want to think about what are the keywords? So for example, if you're looking to get a job in marketing or sales, um, go look at some job descriptions for a marketing or a sales role. Figure out what those consistent keywords are that you're seeing across those job descriptions and figure out a way to include them in a summary of you know, your strengths and what you could bring to the company. It's very important. This is one of the first things that they're gonna look at. Recruiters are using LinkedIn, the jobs are there. You, you wanna be where the action is. So how do we start to get recruiters' attention? Well, there's really five must-have profile sections for every student. 75% um, of hiring managers look at LinkedIn profiles to learn about a candidate. You can see this stat's actually a little dated. I would say it's gotta be over 90% at this point. Um, I can't imagine not looking at LinkedIn. Uh, in my prior company, I was managing a team um, of, of sellers. And when I would interview a candidate, you know, I would get the resume from my recruiter. I would get, you know, a ton of background information from their phone screen. Um, but really I didn't have time to look at that. So for me, what I would do is I would just type their name in LinkedIn and take a quick look at their profile to, to give myself a good idea of, you know, how they position themselves online, where they went to school, all of that information on their background was right there for me in a consumable format. So we're going to talk through each one of these one by one education, photo experience, volunteer experience and skills, um, kind of uh, the importance of each one of these things and then kind of where you actually can add this information on LinkedIn. So first and foremost is adding a photo. Um, seems like a pretty basic tip here, uh, but you'd be surprised how many profiles I come across, not just students, but um, professionals, right, who don't have a photo or perhaps don't have a proper photo, uh, meaning you alone from shoulders up with a neutral background in, you know, some type of professional clothing. Um, or they have their settings set incorrectly so that people, maybe they have a picture, but people actually can't see their picture. So I'll show you how we change that on our LinkedIn. I'll transition over to that in a second. Um, but again, it all starts with your profile. It's all about, you know, a photo and a nice smile. And again, why does this matter? It's going to help improve your rankings on search engines. You're going to be more likely to be found by recruiters. Um, you know, I think it get, LinkedIn really gives you the room to kind of elaborate on your resume as well. Um, so that's that's a super important area to uh, make sure that we we have covered. Next is all about adding your education. So making sure that on your LinkedIn profile, you've added your school, you've added whatever degree you're working towards, any academic awards or honors, clubs, sports that you're a member of. Um, you know, as Annie mentioned, I, I played on the soccer team um, at, at Sacred Heart. A lot of recruiters, you know, are looking for those extracurriculars. They're looking to see, okay, did this student, you know, um, participate in sports that, you know, and play on the division one team. Cause, oh, that means that they probably have pretty good time management skills, right? If they were able to keep a nice GPA and play at a high level or, oh, they were involved in, you know, these charity things or these clubs or these sororities, they had a leadership position in this club. All of those little things actually do matter. So it's super important to just add them to your profile. And I'll actually transition to my um, LinkedIn really quick and just show you where to find these. I mean, you guys are college students, so it's probably pretty intuitive for you, but I will um, just show you that so you can see. All right, you should be seeing my LinkedIn profile now. Are you guys seeing that? 
Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, um, so what you're going to want to do what to make these edits is go to me, your, your, your picture, and you're going to go to settings and privacy. Um, and first we're going to look at our visibility and if um, people can actually see your photo, because again, super important, right? So we're going to click in and you can see this is kind of where you would edit your photo. This is where you could edit um, your headline or your current position, your location. Um, and you can actually, this is a new feature that just came out. You can actually record your name pronunciation as well. So that way, you know, my maiden name was O'Callaghan and people butchered it all the time, right? Uh, Ficini's a little harder to mess up, but uh, it's a little more straightforward. But O'Callaghan with the GH and an apostrophe, people butchered it all the time. So, you know, you could easily add that, you know, so that way when people do call you that they're able to pronounce your name correctly. Um, you have the ability to, again, like I said, look at your visibility. So we'll click into that on the left hand side here. And then we'll want to look at our profile viewing options. We'll hit change. Right. And we want to make sure that this is how we're showing up your name and your headline, not you know, salesperson at LinkedIn, right? That looks, I mean, no, who wants to answer a salesperson at LinkedIn? I don't. Um, anonymous LinkedIn member, probably not going to connect with them, right? So you want to make sure that your name, your headline, your photo are all available. Um, you can even look at your public profile. So this is my public profile. And again, this is going to be personal preference, but best practice is um, to create a custom URL. So, you know, if you look at your URL, it probably is just linkedin.com slash, you know, a million letters and numbers. You can make it your name. Why not? It's, it's an easily accessible link for you. Um, and then your, your profile's public visibility. Um, you will want to set your visibility to either public, meaning, hey, if they Google you, they find your LinkedIn profile, which I think, you know, this isn't like Instagram or Snapchat or, you know, whatever you guys, TikTok, like this is, this is the professional social media, right? So this is going to be, okay, when they Google me, I want them to find my LinkedIn and how I tell my story that way, not perhaps other mediums that I'm using. So I recommend public. Um, if not, you want to at least go with all LinkedIn me mem uh, members, because if you just click your network, for example, um, you're not going to be fully visible to those who you're not connected with. So you can you can play with each one of these toggles in terms of what you wanna show, but you could see for me, I mean, I pretty much have everything out there available on Google because I wrote all of it, right? It's, it's how I wanna be represented um, in the best light um, on the internet. So I'll transition back to the slides here. Actually, before I do that, because instead of jumping back and forth, I'll just show you So when we want to make actual edits on our profile, um, we can click on the, the pencil icon here to edit any one of these areas. So whether it's your about me section, whether it's adding jobs, right? It's all right here, very intuitive in terms of how you actually, you know, craft your, your LinkedIn profile. All right, so jumping back in. So, so far we covered, um, we covered our photo, right? The importance of that. Um, kind of the value that that adds for us. Um, our education, kind of having that on there, why that's important. Well, um, you know, that's super important because you can always network with alumni. Um, you know, I'll give you an example of this really quick. I went to, um, I don't know if there's any Long Island students on the line, but I went to St. Anthony's High School on Long Island. I have it on my LinkedIn profile. Um, and this gentleman I didn't know, he graduated, um, I think like six years after I did. Um, and he was a lawyer. He had, you know, gone to law school, but decided he didn't like law school and wanted to pivot into sales. So what he did is he actually used the, the alumni section on the college, um, the Sacred Heart um, College LinkedIn page. And he typed in LinkedIn and he found anybody who went to St. Anthony's, or I'm sorry, it was St. Anthony's, not Sacred Heart. So he used the, the St. Anthony's alumni page, but you could do the same thing with Sacred Hearts. And he found me 
um, by searching anyone who works at LinkedIn. And he reached out with a really thoughtful note um, and said, hey, you know, this is my story. I went to law school. I'm interested in learning more about sales. Would you be willing to spend a couple minutes with me? Now I get, I get messages asking for my time all the time, right? But this one seemed really genuine. He had done his research, um, included some personal things about actually people that we knew in common. Um, so I did spend time with him and long story short is I ended up connecting him with someone at LinkedIn who helps uh, individuals who don't have a background in sales, um, you know, look to get that entry level role in sales. So, you know, people are willing to help. Um, and that's just one of the examples of some of the, the value that LinkedIn can bring. Next here is adding your work experience. So uh, profiles with work experience are 12 times more likely to get messaged. Um, and profiles with two or more positions are actually 36 times more likely to be found by recruiters. So you might say, okay, well, you know, I'm a student, I'm just starting out. I don't have two positions. Well, I, I guarantee you've probably you know, worked or volunteered um, over your lifetime. So I would include internships, summer jobs, any part-time jobs that you've had, um, kind of describe what you accomplished or what you learned. And if you're really being strategic and you start to think, okay, well, I've only, you know, I've only um, been a summer camp counselor. Okay, but what did you learn from that experience? Did it help you with time management skills? Did it help you with organization? Did it help you with leadership, right? You can, you can start to think about the keywords and the adjectives and verbs that um, recruiters are gonna be looking for for any job, right? Those, those tangible skills that you acquired from your various experiences and kind of have that represented on, on your profile. Okay, step four here is adding volunteer experience. So I think highly tied into work experience, especially if you're just starting out. The stat at the bottom really stands out to me. 41% of hiring managers consider volunteer experience equally as valuable as paid work experience. 41% of hiring managers consider volunteer experience equally as valuable as paid work experience. So if you're not a part of a club, join a club, right? Every club at, at uh, Sacred Heart, you know, does some type of charity and volunteer work. I think it's super important for you to show that you're involved in your community, that you're involved in your school. Um, and, you know, let's say, you know, you only trained to be an athlete your whole life and you, you didn't work that many jobs, right? Um, having that volunteer experience will have you look like that more well-rounded individual that recruiters are looking for. It's very important to represent any volunteer experiences that you might have, any accomplishments or awards or any interests, um, joining relevant groups on LinkedIn. So you could see this is the accomplishments feed here. You can add any of um, the courses perhaps that you've taken, any honors or awards that you might have been given. Um, let's say you write and you've been published in publications or even the school newspaper, right? Include that here. Any organizations that you're a part of, any languages that you speak. Um, everyone's always looking for, you know, multilingual candidates. Um, it's definitely gonna help you to, to stick out. And then think about what you're interested in, right? So maybe you're like, okay, well, you know, I don't, I haven't defined my major yet, but I think I like marketing or, um, you know, I'm interested in financial services. Follow some of the co top companies in those industries so that you can see what they post and start to learn, right? What are they talking about? Is this actually interesting to me? Um, and again, it allows you to show up to your recruiters in terms of, hey, look at all these great accomplishments that this person has, has had. Look at all these volunteer um, you know, whether it's, you know, for me, like I used to, I used to coach um, youth soccer a ton, right? So having that on my profile to show that, you know, I'm engaged in my community. They really want to get an idea of who you are as a, as a individual. Um, so next, our, our fifth tip here is adding your skills. So again, super important. You could edit it just by clicking that um, pencil on your profile. But students who add five or more skills actually receive up to 17 times more profile views. So guys, this is like an easy hack to make sure that, you know, recruiters are finding you, that you're showing up more. Like I talked about before, 
get creative, right? No one can, you know, just say, oh, well, I don't know. I want to go into marketing, but I don't have any experience. Well, everyone starts with no real experience, right? But you could talk about what are the skills? What are those relevant skills that you've acquired from your internships, from your volunteer experiences? Um, I also can't speak uh, more highly about the importance of recommendations. So whether it's from um, a professor or perhaps, you know, the strongest ones I would say is you do an internship and you have the person who was your supervisor write a recommendation for the work that you provided with them, you know, keep those relationships. It's, you know, life is all about relationships. Truly relationships do matter. Um, that's, you know, for, you know, I haven't had to, you can skip a lot of the steps in getting hired if you have relationships, right? So when you're starting out, obviously you're gonna to have to go through a full you know, interview process for, for um, the first time. And most likely you don't have that many connections yet. But as you grow in business, you know, your goal should be to, to build and maintain relationships with people to the point where if you wanna go pivot and work for Google or a large financial company or large manufacturing company, that you have relationships that can refer you in. It just makes your life that much easier. So, you know, don't forget relationships matter, never burn bridges. It's very, very important to um, maintain these relationships that you do have. And a great way to do that is through LinkedIn, right? We don't have time to necessarily pick up the phone and call and check in with people all the time, um, but we can keep up with them on LinkedIn, right? We can comment or like posts that they make. We can write them a quick message. Um, you know, it's all these little actions that really make the difference and will set you ahead. All right, um, our sixth and last tip here is drafting a summary. So, you know, you wanna spend some time on this. Um, I would say draft it out a couple times, maybe review it with the Career Center, talk to, you know, professors or, you know, whoever your, your board of directors is, right? You want to start to think about who's on my board of directors? Who are the people that I look up to and I admire who can help guide me in the right direction for my career? And this is kind of that prime real estate for you to talk about really you, right? What motivates you, gives you an opportunity to show your personality. Um, the best way to think about this is it's kind of your elevator pitch. You want to introduce yourself. You want to focus on your accomplishments and aspirations, but it's also super important to kind of keep it short as well. Um, so this is a great example of uh, a student here um, who, you know, has a has a short but to the point um, summary. You could certainly check out mine as well. Um, you know, mine kind of talks through my experience and, and I edit mine all the time. I actually just edited my summary last week um, and I hadn't edited it. I've been here two years now. So I think I had edited it when I moved to LinkedIn and then I was like, oh, I could probably refresh it and make it a little stronger. So I did that last week um, and kind of wordsmithed it a little bit. And, you know, it's all about, again, how you want to position yourself, your experience, why you do what you do, why you're interested in the job that you have. All that stuff is, is really, really important. And LinkedIn gives you a great opportunity, again, to, to kind of own your narrative. All right. Um, let's see where we are for time. Oh, good. We, we're doing well. All right, I have a couple more slides that we'll go through um, and then we'll kind of, um, you know, open it up for, for questions, um, you know, after that. But again, your summary is, is really, really important. I can't say more about that. That's kind of that space that, that you have um, to talk about who you are, the value that you can bring. All of that information is, is very, very important. All right. Um, Next is um, launching a career and networking with community. So we talked a little bit, I gave you that example about the alumni tool. Um, I'll show you how to use that in a second. I'll, I'll jump on LinkedIn and show you. But um, again, you can go right to the Sacred Heart University um, LinkedIn page. You can see all of the alumni. You would click on the drop down here and you can type in any company that you want and quickly see where they live, where they work. So let me show you this in real time. If it'll switch for me. All right, let's see. All right, I'm 
out of full screen mode. Let me reshare my screen here. Share screen, desktop one. All right, cool. So you guys should be seeing my LinkedIn now. Uh, what we can do is we can type in Sacred Heart University, okay? And we can scroll down just like we saw on the slide and we can go to the alumni section here. And we can see, okay, there's a ton of alumni on LinkedIn. I wanna find alumni that work at GE. Okay, so now I can quickly see all the different people that work for GE that went to Sacred Heart. I can also see where they live, where they work, right? So again, this is people that worked at GE or currently work at GE. Um, you could also change the start year to say, hey, I only wanna see people that work at GE this year, right? Or I only wanna see people that work at Google that went to Sacred Heart, right? And you can quickly see where all the alumni are. So this is a great way for you to have an idea of where the alumni work now, you should never just reach out and be like, hey, can you help me get a job? Because, you know, that's kind of unprofessional. And if they don't know you, they're not likely to help you. But um, I think it's different if you if you are tailored in your approach and say, hey, you know, I noticed you were part of the same sorority or fraternity or you played soccer or you played sports at Sacred Heart. So did I. I noticed that you're in HR at GE. You know, that's an area that I'm interested in would love to understand how you got started at the company. You know, it's always worth reaching out. Um, not everyone will answer, right? But um, it's always worth a shot, right? You don't, you don't know if you don't try. Um, so I'd recommend that you, you take advantage of that tool as well and maybe talk with the Career Center and talk with your professors about how to you know, best position that and when to reach out. Um, next is just kind of some networking advice. Um, so again, we were kind of talking through this, but super important. Um, to break out of your silo, don't wait until you need a job to start building your network, right? Um, build relationships organically. Finding a job takes time, like I said. So, you know, think about what you want to do. Perhaps think about family or friends or, um, you know, coworkers that might be able to help you. Um, I would say think about people, whether it's prior coaches, prior employers, um, prior mentors or professors that you can connect with to increase the value of your network. Add them as connections. Stay in touch with them through email, which is the messaging feature. Um, and then, like I talked about, build a board of advisors. So, you know, start to think about people in your network and, you know, even outside of LinkedIn, right, just in your life, um, who you can trust and rely on for straightforward advice. So the advocate, right, this is someone who knows you on a personal level, perhaps a close friend or a family member that kind of acts as a trusted sounding board for you. You know, again, for me, that's somebody either in my immediate family um, or a close friend that I kind of just want to ping pong some information off of. The strategic in is someone who is a well-connected individual. So maybe this is one of your advisors, your professors, a coach um, that you have a good enough relationship with where if you share hey, these are my goals and aspirations, they're willing to make connections on your behalf. Um, so again, this is, you know, you have to have that trusted relationship with this person. Um, that's why relationships matter. You want to start to think about investing, right, in, in relationships. Last but not least is the subject matter expert, right? So this is someone who perhaps, um, you know, has a wealth of experience in a specific industry. They can offer you insight on this industry, kind of what they're seeing and kind of give you an unbiased opinion of that. So for me, I'll give you an example of who these people are for me, right? The advocate is, is a family member um, or close friend or some combination of the two. Um, you know, even like my husband, right? He could be kind of my advocate, my sounding board. The strategic in, this is someone who, um, like when I think about my career in sales, these are people who I've worked for in the past. So heads of sales that are now at other companies um, that I can call if I wanted to get a job with them. In a heartbeat, they would hire me in because, you know, one, they trust me, two, they know that I perform, right? So this will continue to kind of build 
but this is a great foundation to start to think about now in your life around, okay, who do I have a good enough relationship with that they could refer me in to someone that they might know? You never know, right? I think it's important to share your aspirations, your career goals with people that you do trust because you never know who's, you know, neighbor, brother, cousin, you know, friend uh, is involved in, in that industry and might be willing to take a conversation with you. And then for me, a subject matter expert is, you know, someone who um, perhaps um, I have a really good relationship with um, that, you know, has a deep and wide breadth of experience in software sales or consulting sales, right? I might not want to go work for them today, but I know that if I asked a specific question about an industry that they'd be able to give me, you know, unbiased advice. So again, start to think about this, start to kind of plot this out for your life. Um, because, you know, I, I have two younger sisters and I always say to them, listen, like you can happen to your life or life can just happen to you, right? The years kind of fly by. So unless you're controlling your narrative and really being strategic about, okay, this is what I want to do in the next year, three years, five years, 10 years, here are my goals. And you're articulating that and sharing that with people that can help you get there. Um, you know, life's going to happen to you versus you happening to your life. Um, the majority of decisions that are going to be made about your career are going to be made when you're not in the room. So it's super important to have these advocates, you know, in, in your job that understand what you care about, that understand what you're trying to do. But as you're starting out again, a couple more tips here before we wrap up, follow companies that you're interested in, right? Um, follow companies that you care about, that you're interested in potentially working for, that you just want to keep up with the latest news and updates. That'll make your newsfeed rich with information. Start to explore jobs and set your, your, pre your search preferences on LinkedIn, right? So we can look for jobs um, right on LinkedIn. Um, we can quickly, you know, run searches. We can save those searches. Um, you can customize that. You go to linkedin.com slash jobs, or, you know, when you go on LinkedIn, you'll see the ability to actually just search for jobs in the drop down. Following influencers. So again, a super great way to get an understanding of, you know, companies that you might like, that you might be interested in, um, that you want to learn more about, you know, Harvard Business Review is, you know, something that I always follow um, because they share relevant information. Wall Street Journal is great. You know, any of these industry publications, Financial Times, Bloomberg, whatever industry you're interested, think about the top publications. You know, what are the executives at the companies that you would potentially want to work with? What do they care about? What are they keeping uh, tabs on? What are some of the trends that are happening in the advertising industry, the financial service industry, whatever it might be? Start to do this, start to follow people. And again, I'll show you in a second the way that you do that. Joining groups and building your network. So we talked about this, joining various groups um, on LinkedIn, you know, just start to search for, you know, um, marketers or young professionals, or, you know, I think one of the first groups I joined um, when I was leaving school was the NCA after the game group something like that. Um, if you put an NCA, it will come up and it's like a group of all former athletes that, um, you know, played sports and it's, everyone tells stories about how, you know, sports help them transition into, you know, being success, successful in the role that they have today. So it's kind of cool to have that network of people. Um, and if I have questions, I can always reach out to them. Um, and then I think just a couple things to remember with LinkedIn groups, listen and learn. I would say, you know, initially just listening mode, Listening is the number one skill that you can have. Um, if you're feeling confident and you want to, you know, start to share relevant articles or comments on articles, you know, make sure that you're keeping it professional. Um, you know, start to look at some of the members, start to think about how you can grow, grow your network. Um, and again, keep it professional, right? Everyone can view your full profile. It's important to keep that in mind as you uh, engage. And um, last three slides here before we kind of open it up for questions. So um, when we do this in person, usually I throw this out as a question, you know, to the, to the group that I'm presenting to, but given we're on Zoom, um, I'll just kind of show you these. So I thought this was interesting. This basically shows um, the most in-demand soft skills in 2020, according to recruiters, according to job uh, companies that have open job roles. And the most in-demand soft skills in 2020 were creativity, persuasion, 
collaboration, adaptability, and time management. So like I said before, start to think about the experiences that you've had, volunteer experience, past job experience, even if it was being, you know, I, I nannied through college, um, but there's a lot of, you know, soft skills that you could take from that, right, that are applicable to any career that you want. So let's say I nannied in college and I'm trying to get my first job. My first job was in marketing, actually. Okay, well, you know, what kind of skills did I acquire in terms of persuasion, getting people, getting these children, right, to do the things I need them to do? Um, did I, was I able to, you know, develop time management skills and be adaptable based on, you know, the situations that I was in in that role? So you want to start to think about, you know, not only for your LinkedIn, but as you go into interviews, like what are stories that you can tell around these types of skills and also looking at the various keywords that might be on that job description as well. Start to think about, okay, you know, if, if you look at the job description and it says, we're looking for someone who takes initiative, there's a self-starter that they, um, you know, have good time management skills, that they have experience you know, leading teams, right? I don't know. So let's just say those are the keywords that are on your job description. As you approach that, that conversation, whether it's an initial conversation or, um, you know, an official interview, you want to think about the stories that you can tell relative to those keywords. So that's just a little, a little tip. And then uh, on the other side of this, miss most in-demand hard skills in 2020, Cloud computing, artificial intelligence, analytical reasoning, people management, and UX design, right? So I look at this and I'm like, well, okay. Like coming out of school, I knew nothing about cloud computing or really AI or UX design, but I could tell a story about analytical reasoning and I could tell a story about people management, right? Like I was the captain of my soccer team. Um, I was, you know, the VP of communications for the marketing club, right? Um, analytical reasoning. Okay, we, you know, developed a fundraiser around X or Y. We, you know, I was able to convince people to do X or Y, right? So you just want to start to think about stories that you can tell. Again, think about most importantly, the keywords on that job description, but also just, I thought this was interesting to share in terms of the soft skills that we're seeing in most demand and the hard skills in most demand. Um, last but not least, and, um, you know, I don't sell LinkedIn learning. I actually sit on our, our sales navigator software side of the business, but I, I did want to just put this out there for you guys. Um, we have free 30 day trials of LinkedIn learning. It's pretty neat. And it would allow you to basically have a certification on your profile. If one, you're trying to learn new skills Two, you, you know, don't have much on there and need to start put, putting stuff on there. Um, it, it allows you to, you know, build existing skills, learn something new. We have over 11,000 courses on everything you can imagine, like from business to photography, to other creative things, to leadership. So I would just recommend that you guys like take a look, poke around in LinkedIn learning. Um, I'm pretty sure there's still a 30 day free trial. Check it out. Um, and, and, you know, you might be able to learn something new or be like, Hey, you know, I think I'm interested in, um, manufacturing, but I'm not sure. Right. And then maybe you'll find that you actually are based on the fact that you, you took the course. So, um, that was a lot of talking for me, uh, at you guys, a lot more fun in person, but thank you for your time. We can open it up to, um, any questions from the group now. Great. Thank you so much, Maggie. You are always full of so much wonderful information. Um, so we do have a couple questions. Um, what, the first is from Abigail. Um, she's asking, under the courses tab on a profile, how many and what type of courses should I add? Good question. So um, that's kind of going to be personal preference, but I would say, you know, from a courses perspective, if you're thinking about, I would, I would think about courses in terms of like, not your core curriculum, more so, you know, if you are a finance major or you're an accounting major, you're an economics major, like calling out those specific courses that you've taken that you think are going to be relevant to the jobs that you're going to want to pursue. Great advice. Um, next question. How would I, this is coming from Sabrina. Uh, how would I search for a job if I am going into the health field, like being an occupational therapist? 
So um, yeah, so you would basically, um, you would click into linkedin.com slash jobs. All right, can you see my screen now? Yep. All right, so you can search, you know, occupational therapy, right? And that mine's the greater New York City area, or you can search any metro area that you want. And you can have all your different job descriptions here, but what I would do is actually look at all the different filters, right? So, okay, I wanna find jobs that have been posted in the last year or the last 24 hours, right? Or the last week. Um, I want to find jobs that are only entry level uh, or maybe just internships for now. Or, hey, I know I wanna work at a specific company. Um, also job type is gonna be super important. Um, I wouldn't specify remote. I would leave that off, especially for entry level. Um, you know, and again, you can narrow, you could see, right. You can narrow all of this stuff down. Um, you can say, Hey, I only want to do occupational therapy in hospital and healthcare, or maybe I want to do occupational therapy in another, another area. Um, but you could see, right. There's tons of, of different things that you can, you can search for. I'd recommend kind of keeping it wide at first by, maybe just trying the keyword and the metro area, but you can all also narrow it down, um, you know, as you see fit. Maggie, if I may add, you know, there's a common misconception that healthcare professionals are not on LinkedIn. Um, and we try and drill it into our students that professionals from every industry is on LinkedIn and it's, it's an ever growing resource. So certainly for, mm. for, our, for our health students, please don't be shy. You will find a robust amount of alumni that are willing to support your search efforts. Yeah, I will. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, I sell for LinkedIn, a software that sits on top of free LinkedIn that helps um, people, you know, basically have souped up LinkedIn, like find, find people on LinkedIn and helping them to make connections that much quicker. And we have been growing exponentially in healthcare um, over the last five years. I work with a ton of um, health systems, hospital sy systems, I actually did just, just did one of these rock your profile type sessions for uh, a large health system in New Jersey. Um, yeah, every type of industry is on here um, from IT to health, to financial services, to manufacturing, um, you'd be surprised. So yeah, I would say, I would say give it a shot. Um, you know, there's, there's nurses, there's doctors on here, all different types of openings. And you can see here, right? Like for example, occupational therapist in Brooklyn, two alumni work here, right? It'll automatically tell you if there's Sacred Heart alumni here, same thing here, right? There's a ton of them, but that's a good question. So thank Great. you. I have another one for you. Mm -hmm. um, Kayla, as a college student, is my work and volunteer experience from high school now irrelevant? And is that something that I should not include on my LinkedIn page? Um, no, I wouldn't, I would include it. I think it depends, right? If you're a senior in college, um, then you probably want to have more updated work experience, right? Hopefully you've had an internship or two and, um, you know, you are involved in clubs and things like that. Um, but I can't hurt you to have that work experience on there. Um, you know, I would say like, like think about your resume, right? As you start to, I would say you want to go back at least two or three years, um, to show, you know, some jobs, right? We talked about having at least two jobs on there is super important. So if your job experience is from high school, that's okay. Right. Again, I would think about it in the lens, the lens of, um, okay, it was a babysitting job, but how can I position that in a way that shows the skills that I acquired, right, from, uh, from you know, babysitting, right, time management, like those things that you can pull out that are going to be applicable, applicable to any job is what's super important to showcase. Great. We have another Kayla, different Kayla. Um, she's interested in knowing where on your profile do you put clubs? Oh, good question. All right. So if I go to my profile, oh, and you can also, I mean, this is just some other like cool things. We went through kind of the basics, but you can also create, you know, um, you could put a photo to make your profile stand out. So for me, um, you know, I use my company's 
thing you could put you know the new york city skyline or something that's relevant to you you a soccer field whatever you know is going to be most relevant for you but it kind of makes your profile stand out um in terms of where you would put your clubs you're going to scroll down and um it would be under volunteer experience any clubs so you know you can see here i have the stuff that i i've done um any licenses and certifications would be here um you know and for me right i've been out of school for a while now so like i don't have those things i don't have my clubs right under volunteer experience anymore because they're old right for me um i don't have you know women's soccer as something else i just have it under my school for now but the way that you can add sections too, right? If your section isn't on your profile, it would be up right up here. It's kind of where everything lives. Great. Uh, Maggie, I have, I have a question. Um, sure. what, what sort of advice would you give to maybe a student, you know, you talk a lot about keywords and writing that summary of, you know, kind of who you are and, and what you're looking for. Um, what sort of advice would you have for students who don't necessarily know what they want to do, but they're still looking to create a robust profile to start to network on LinkedIn? Yeah, I think that's a great question because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, I switched my major. I switched into the business school like junior year. Um, I was a psych major. I first I wanted to do education. I was like, I'm going to coach. Like I love playing soccer. I was like, I'm just going to coach, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I'll do psychology. And then I was like, oh, I really am interested in it, but I don't think I want to do it every day. So I switched to my minor. And then I was like, I think I want to do marketing. Um, and then I ended up, you know, working in sales, but. Um, to answer your question, I think, yeah, it's completely normal to not know what you want to do. I think, you know, when you're thinking about creating a summary, it's more so just positioning yourself as, you know, um, a well-rounded student. So like if you met somebody at a networking event, right? Um, hey, you know, I'm Jane Smith. I am a sophomore at Sacred Heart University. I am, you know, I'm from New Jersey. I, you know, play soccer, you know, whatever like the extracurriculars are that you do, kind of what you feel like you bring to the table in terms of, um, you know, I've had, I've worked summer camps, right, or I volunteer about this or that, and it's taught me that I have really strong skills in time management, and you know, time management is a general one, I keep using that, like that, that's pretty much applicable to like any job, right, that you're looking for, so like, I'm just sticking with that as an example, but you know, hey, through through working in retail through, you know, maybe you were a checkout person at Staples, right? Working in retail, I learned time management skills. Like I'll give you an example of that. Streetwise Partners, the, the um, group that I mentor with serves a lot of like uh, first time college students or perhaps like they're refugees that are going to college for the first time or they're a first generation college student. They really don't have that network. So we did a lot of work with them. Like I, my mentor was like, I, you know, I don't have any experience. Yeah, I, like, I got a degree in finance, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, and you know, I've only worked at like Staples and all of this retail stuff. And I said, yeah, but what did you learn at Staples? What did you do every day? Well, I had to work with different departments. You know, I had to work with like the geek squad department and this and that. And I said, okay, great. So you learned how to work well with others. To, you know, it's all about wordsmithing. And I would say lean into your professors, lean into the career center to kind of help you with some of that. Um, but think about the adjectives that represent you as a person again kind of like you, just your elevator pitch if you were to introduce yourself to someone probably a long answer but no so helpful <laughs> so helpful any other questions if not i've got one more Okay, I'm going to take take over again. Um, so the um, you talked a little bit in the beginning about the headline. Um, yeah, the headline versus the summary. I see a lot of students that just put something like senior management major at Sacred Heart as their headline or just, you know, um, junior finance major at Sacred Heart. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's an it's an interesting question. Um, so, you know, because that's what you are, right? Student at XYZ University, student at Sacred Heart University. I, it's fine, but it doesn't stand out. 
it's not optimized for LinkedIn. Um, it's the default headline on LinkedIn, right? If, if, if you hadn't changed it. So it doesn't contain any keywords. We talked about keywords, right? Potential recruiters, hiring managers are searching for keywords. So that means you show up to less hiring managers and recruiters that are looking for you. And it doesn't stand out from other profiles in search results, right? So, you know, how many, there's nothing to differentiate you from the thousands of other students at Sacred Heart University headline, right? Um, so, I, you know, I would think about this in terms of if you have experience in the job that you want, for example, you had an internship, mention the job title that you are interning for. Um, if you don't have any experience yet, you can try entry level marketing, aspiring public relations, aspiring occupational therapist. Um, I would say just mention industry specific keywords that you can expect recruiters to search for. So for example, like let's say you're super techie and you had an internship in developing Java software, um, but you, you know, your internship's done and you're currently looking for a job. You can make your uh, headline, aspiring Java software developer, seeking entry level programming position, experience with JavaScript and Python, right? Like those are key words for that job description. You might not have that, Right, you might not have, you know, might not even know what those keywords are, but I mean, you could, you could, you know, put aspiring sales professional, aspiring financial services professional, financial analyst seeking a new role, CFA level two, right, or statistics major graduating in 2020. Um, there's a lot of different options, um, but I, I guess the the key to takeaway is is keywords. And again, how do I figure out what keywords are important to me? I'm gonna look at job descriptions and I'm gonna see what words consistently come up for my industry. So yeah, there's, it takes, it's it's a lot of, it's footwork, right? If you wanna get ahead, it's putting in the work and figuring it out, um, but it, it really does pay off. Um, you know, I got my first, my first internship was through a professor at Sacred Heart University. Um, then that internship led to, he had a friend who, ran a startup for IT professionals that I joined. Um, then I was at that company for almost eight years. And then I had a friend refer me into LinkedIn. And instead of having to go through this scrupulous interview process, you know, they were so tightly connected that I was able to kind of skip steps. So relationships matter. When you're starting out, use keywords, build that board of directors. Um, so you're set up for success. Great, such great advice, Maggie. Thank you again so much. So I think that's it for uh, for questions. Um, we did record this, so everybody um, gotten a lot of questions just about how to how to view it. Uh, we will upload it and uh, put it on our website for you to all access. But um, again, Maggie, appreciate your time so so much. Um, this was just absolutely wonderful, and I am now going to go work on my LinkedIn page. <laughs> with all of the great advice. <laughs> I don't want to look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. Well, thanks guys. Appreciate your time. Good luck uh, and stay safe. Thank you again. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.